Trevor the tractor looked around, confused. What am I doing here? This is a farmyard, exclaimed Trevor. Of course it is, said George. This is your new home. This is where you're going to live. Sam here has bought you. What? shouted Trevor. Nobody asked me if I wanted to come here. Look, it's all dirty. It's a farmyard, said Sam. What do you expect? I thought I was going to another showroom, said Trevor. Oh, dear. I can feel one of my funny turns coming on. Glyn Davies, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. In the pink. And things good in Lincolnshire? Yeah, yeah, sun's been shining. Yeah, it's been a nice day. Well, oh, well, that's a bonus, isn't it? We've had all sorts of weather here. We had, uh, it was sunny when I went out because I, I make a point of going out once because you can get locked in this booth, you know, because I like it. And I, I make a, a definite point of going out once a day and I go to the shop. There's two. If it's raining, I go to the co-op, which is only a few blocks away. And if it's not raining, I walk up to the Tesco by the railway station just so I get out. And yeah. I, I went out today and it was uh, it was lovely at about lunchtime. But it's been raining since six o'clock. Really? Yeah. yeah, in the evening. So, um, nice I don't know. Yeah. So, so what's a typical day look like for you then? What today? Oh, got up, got up at. Uh, oh no, I had late start today. Was it today? No, it wasn't. That was yesterday. I lose all track. Yeah. Keep up. What am I doing here? <laughs> uh, no, it was uh, up at three. Start at four. Wait, 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 wait. Up at three? That's oh, usual. Yeah. yeah. Well, if I'm driving, yeah, yeah. Jeez, when I was doing breakfast radio, I didn't get up that early. <laughs> Wow, get up at three, yeah, and then uh, and then do you have to drive to work and then get in the truck? Yeah, well, it's only well, I, I can walk there in about eight minutes, but okay, only two minutes in the van, so I go in the van, especially at that time in the morning. Then uh, the, the the place to work for it's only literally on the edge of the village, right? So it's ideal. Right, yeah, and then you'd be driving all day, and you and when I spoke to you on the phone, was it yesterday or the day before, and you'd gone to Cumbria? Oh yeah, I was on my way back then when you when you spoke to me. Yeah, yeah. So that's a typical day. You'll go to Cumbria. One day I spoke to you. You were on your way either to or from Hull. And uh, yeah. yeah, well, the, uh, I do I do a sort of fairly regular run to uh, Washington, up near Newcastle. Yeah. Um, and then I think yes, yesterday I reloaded from, from Cumbria. Today it should have been Hall, but it got cancelled, so I had an early finish today. But then right. you can, you can be all over the place. Sometimes you go to France. But, uh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, so what time do wheels roll then? Uh, four o'clock. Four o'clock, you're on the road going. Yeah. And is that to beat early morning traffic, or is that just because you need a long day to get there and back? No, it was, well, it's just a, just the scheduling from from the warehouse because we we, yeah. we do a lot of fruit and veg for uh, local suppliers to Asda mainly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's it just work work around the warehouse, and then then if you're collecting on the way back, it's then it's then scheduling in with them. So yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, there's a lot of early starts. Wow, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, the only downside is come the weekend, you're still waking up at three o'clock. Yeah, no, I didn't have that problem when I did breakfast radio. I used to sleep Saturday. It was like I would binge sleep um, uh, and I'd make up for it. It's probably really unhealthy. It's probably healthier to actually get up at the same time every day. Yeah. Okay, so it was while you were in the truck, you were telling me once, that you originally had the inspiration for Trevor the Tractor. Tell yeah, me about Trevor, that. Trevor was the Trevor was the first book I wrote, um, which we spoke about before. It goes back yeah. to when the kids were little. Well, Chloe was was, was the oldest, who was then you know, the, then the first, and then they'd ha they'd have uh, or she'd have a a, a like a favourite 
three or four books for bedtime. And how old was she? Oh, probably about three then. Okay. So this yeah. is an important time for books and stories and... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, generally June would take her up, could mum would take her to bed, but, you know, when it was my turn. But you'd, get, you'd, get, you'd think, she'd all, oh, oh, Dad, can I have... I don't know, whatever it was at the time. And you'd pick it up and say, oh, no, please, not this again. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I was working nights and, and you, just this idea came, came to mind about, I can't, I can't think how I came about with Trevor, um, but I, I think, again, we've spoken about this. I, I broke down um, just outside Leicester. The truck broke down and they said, oh, it's going to be two hours and before they come out to you. So I'm, I'm sat there in the pitch black outside County Hall in Leicester. I thought, oh, well, I grabbed my clipboard and I thought, well, I've had this idea and I'll, I'll see what I can do. And by the time the breakdown truck turned up, I'd written it. You know, On the not, clipboard? Yeah, yeah, just just hand wrote it out. I mean, it's, uh, uh, well, you've seen it. It's not it's not massive, but it, it is what it was intended to be, a, a short bedtime story. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I was quite pleased with that, and then that 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 gave me the the uh, the incentive and the motivation and the um, the confidence to to go on and do Santa. So, when uh, you first read it to Chloe, what was the feedback like from her compared to? I mean, you've got the you've got the you know, you've got an actual focus group of one there. You know <laughs> how she usually responds to the books that you've bought. You know, it's not because if you, you know, if you'd written a book and then you wrote it to someone, but you read it to someone, but you don't know how they normally respond, you don't know whether they're being nice or whatever. Well, kids are going to be a bit more honest. And and you've seen how she reacts and she's got a favourite book and everything. What was the reaction like? Oh, crikey. Um, well, I think she liked it. It was that long ago now. I have, I have a job to remember what I did last week, let alone okay. 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it went down well and I... Um, Rob, my brother, who did the illustration. He, he, we worked for Ladybird at the time, so I sent it to them, thinking, oh, you know, full of all boyed up. Oh, try and get it published. Yeah, and perfect, Ladybird. Yeah, from them, from Ladybird, which I still got over there. Um, thought it was a nice story, well written, and all, all, all the stuff they write, but uh, it didn't fit in with their scheduling. So you think mm, you were a bit of a downer went in the draw and five years later you think oh i'll try somebody else uh got the same again um so you get disheartened again and it goes in the drawer again for another five years and in the, in the meantime santa came along yeah uh, when, when we, for anyone who doesn't know when you say santa came along you don't mean actually santa claus <laughs> you mean santa's disastrous delivery which was the first audio book yeah. you and i did together yeah. yes yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that one came along and you wrote that one based on the confidence uh, you got from Trevor. I, I wouldn't worry about getting knocked back. I was watching a, a quick interview uh, yesterday with John Cleese and he was talking about, you remember the movie A Fish Called Wanda? Oh, yeah, yeah, good story, yeah. Oh, good film, that, yeah. That was knocked back by 14 different movie houses until yeah. finally, I think he said it was MGM, picked it up. And not only was that knocked back, He's John Cleese, you know what I mean? He's, he, you, know, you know, Faulty Towers you regarded as one of the greatest sitcoms, if not the best British sitcom ever. Yeah. And it took, he still had 14 rejections at the level he's at. Right. So I wouldn't worry about getting rejected by <laughs> Lady Bird or anybody because that's part, that's part of the game. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, they were wrong still. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you did. Then you did Santa's disastrous deliver, disastrous delivery, which was a whole heap of fun. But I really, because I've done them in the wrong order. Then I've done really your second book. I did the narration first, and Trevor, your first book. I've done that one second. Yeah, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. But Trevor's, you would never know though that one is like the first one, and one it, they both feel like they've come from someone who's used to writing children's books. 
you know, they, they both do. You'd never go, oh, this was his first effort. It's very crude and very basic. You wouldn't say that because it's just as it's just as good. I wouldn't be able to, to pick a favourite out of the two. It's just as good. And the characters, where does the character of Trevor come from? I don't know, really. He, he, he sort of evolved naturally because I, I did have this thought of... Um, of this tractor being the biggest, strongest, most powerful tractor in the showroom. But he knew it and he, he was full of his own importance. And he, he thought he was there to be admired, not, not to be a working tractor. So it came as a, came as a terrible shock to him to find himself suddenly on a farm amongst yeah. all this mud and muck. Uh, and it, and it was, it was then the, the, the realisation he had to come to that this is it now, I'm, I'm a farm tractor, not a showroom tractor. Yeah, and yeah. So, so the story evolved. It was interesting because uh, when I first narrated it I, and I read it and I looked at it, I thought, OK, so he doesn't like being in the muck and he likes being this, you know, being in a showroom as his home. He likes, he's a bit of a show pony and... He's now faced with life on a farm. How do you do him? So when I first did him, as you know, uh, you went, no, nah, you haven't got him. He's not right. And uh, <laughs> it was because I did. I looked at it and I thought, well, I, my, my brain went, who, who, what kind of person wouldn't like, you know, Then when they're a tractor, would not like being on the farm? And I did him too, probably too poncy, didn't I? A bit too, he wasn't... Uh, he wasn't as manly, shall we say, as you might imagine a tractor to be. And that was nowhere near. You, you said, no, you've got to make him... I forget what, oh. you're, what, what, what you actually said. Bit, uh, bit, a bit more public school boy, a bit, bit sort of full of his own importance. Yes, rather than Ponzi. Yeah. And so I thought about it. OK, I'll do that. And I had a go at it and had another go at it because my brain was saying, he's Ponzi, he doesn't like being dirty, he's like whatever... And you know what it was that clicked? And I don't know whether this is um, an old reference, but it suddenly hit me how to do him. And I didn't do an impersonation of this person, but I took the vibe of how he works and how he would have reacted in that situation. I thought of Tony Hancock. Yeah, yeah. You know, the blood donor, he's like, oh, yeah. a pint is damn near an armful. <laughs> but so... But he's not Ponzi, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's how, and that was how I got to do Trevor. So he's like, I can't, I can't, I couldn't possibly, you know. And and so that was that was how I managed to nail it. Because up until yeah. then, I was yeah. once you'd said no, that's not it. I thought, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, Tony Hancock, yeah. And that was the way I did it. And. Uh, I'm I'm not even old enough to remember Tony Hancock, but I've seen videos of him and the blood donor sketch. Um, uh, I really like, um, and and that was kind of that was the way I did it. It was a kind of a cross between. There's a there's a, it was it was like ninety percent Tony Hancock, but there was ten percent. Do you remember the Magic Roundabout and Dougal? Oh, Dougal, yeah. <laughs> well, Dougal was a bit like that as well. He's like, oh, I ask you. I mean, and so, and, and I. It was, but I think there's a lot of Tony Hancock in Dougal anyway. But yeah. um, and that was how that was how I pulled it off, and uh, I'm so glad it worked because <laughs> I'd be in trouble if it didn't. Yeah, <laughs> but that then it then it all it all it was easy to do him then once I had that in my head. It was easy to go that that did you did were you thinking along those lines when you when you wrote it of of someone a bit like that or was it more public schoolboy as you said? Um. No, just just somebody that was more uh, more self assured and I say full full of his own importance and yes, you know, he, he was he was far too good to be on a farm. He he, <laughs> he should be we should be admired, not worked. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what people do when they come into a showroom and see this pristine, gleaming, polished piece of <laughs> art because you're trying to sell it to them. And uh, which is odd for tractors when you think about it, 
Yeah. Tractors shouldn't be displayed in showrooms. They should be displayed, you know, out the back, you know, with a plow hitched up and yeah. filthy yeah. and scratched, <laughs> you know, because that's what's going to happen. But yeah. So, um, no, it was good. What about the other characters? What about the bulldozer? Oh, well, yeah. I, I, I thought uh, Bert's got to be the complete polar opposite. Yeah. Rusty, clanky. Yeah. Smelly, oily, worn out. Salt of the earth, though. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he is really good. Yeah. So I made him a Yorkshireman. I thought he, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of was his vibe. You know, hard working, like a Yorkshire miner. You know what I mean? Not just a Yorkshireman, a, a hard working Yorkshireman who's done a lot. You know, a hard working Yorkshire miner. Somewhere between his 40s and his 50s. You know what I mean? Seen it all. He's done it all. Knows how to graft. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and what about any other characters? Do they stand out for you the way you wrote them? Uh, the, well, the rest the rest of them were just there to... Um, just to make the story work, really. The, yeah. the two main characters were, were um, Bert and Trevor and the, and yeah. the other... The others were there just to support to yeah, so about the bulldozer. Yeah. Work. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. want to. Um, I didn't want to dilute it too much. No, and the farmer kind of keeps the narrative going, but then you've got the chicken and, and other ones that just come in every now and again, just for a bit, just to mix it up, and just, <laughs> just just to annoy Trevor as well, um, <laughs> which works. So uh, no, it is. A, it's a great book. And how did you find the process of turning Trevor the Tractor into an audio book? Um, it was a lot easier this time. Um, really? Considering you didn't like the way I did the main character? <laughs> Speak for yourself! <laughs> no, in what way was it easier? Was, there's, there's fewer characters in this one than in, uh, in Santa, isn't there? Maybe, was that it? Oh, yeah, yeah. What made it easier? Well, well, it was the, having done Santa. It, yeah, it, it gave me. It, well, it made the process a lot easier, and you 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 realise it's not so uh, not so scary, not so formidable. So it was, yeah, it was a lot easier when, uh, to sort of get it all to work. Yeah. Plus, I suppose you knew what to expect. You knew how it works. So. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. check it out, and then you're gonna get back to me, and you're gonna say, "Can you change that line? Can you make that one a bit more? Can he be a bit more surprised, or whatever it turns out to be?" Actually, I don't think we had much of that in this one, did we? We did in the first one. Don't know if we had much uh, changing how lines were delivered. We had changing the main character. I won't forget that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but obviously, you were right, and I think what we got was better as well. Once I'd put that yeah. Tony Hancock thing. In my head, I think that that no, made it better. I got it, you got it. Well, apart from just getting Trevor's uh, attitude right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we got it right first time. Yeah, it worked well. Yeah, well, it is a fabulous book. It's called Trevor the Tractor. There are links in the description that will send you straight to Amazon, so you can. I mean, the link is to the audio book, but if you just uh, fish around in there, if you want to get it as a as an actual book, if you want to read it to your kids. Or if you want to give it to your kids, it really is good. Um, is there a moral to it? Would you say, Glenn? Um, yeah. Well, well, I suppose don't take yourself too seriously and, and treat, treat treat other people as you would want to be treated yourself. Yeah, yeah. Don't get above yourself. Yeah. And every everybody's important in their own way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. No, it's a, it's a nice story. And what's next for Glyn Davies? Um, well, we've got we've got um, uh, well we've got the sequel to Santa coming along, but that that will be later. Oh, there's a sequel to Santa. Wow, right. Yeah. And will that be set at Christmas as well? Um, I started writing that, but I put that on one side because we've got other things, other things uh, going on. Uh, so that that will come out again probably 
October time, ready ready for Christmases, because I think we were a bit late with a bit late with Santa. Traditionally, uh, February is a bit late for Christmas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it means it means that this Christmas you may well have two Christmas stories out. Well, yeah, how, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Santa's. Um, it, 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 it's. I haven't fixed the title yet, but it's going to be something like Santa's Homecoming or Santa Comes Home. But it, it's based around him coming back home, basically. Yeah. And uh, Miss, Mrs. Claus is waiting for him. Um, and just the chaos continues because he's still as bumbling idiot at home as he has been when he's out on the sleigh. Although he doesn't realise that he is, because oh, no, the, no, the consequences not. of his stupidity are not felt by him at all. Oh, They're no. felt by the reindeer and everyone around him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's all there's all kinds of mayhem going on in the house, and I've got it. I've got it at one point in the story where there's two. I've got the may the, the may change, but I've got uh, I've got two moose walking past which is probably wrong for the north pole but they may get chained there's two mo moose walking past and they can hear this ah, coming from inside the house and the one the one moose turns to the other goes he's back <laughs> yeah yeah that sounds good and there's another one you sent me the artwork for that one um can you talk about that yet or is that still a secret no, no, no. That's uh, in fact. I <laughs> I sent you the cover for that. But oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I got it on a text. Yeah, yeah. It looks great. Yeah, yeah. fart yeah. map. Yes, it's an action shot, doesn't it? It's uh, he's actually <laughs> in the process of letting you know exactly how he got that name <laughs> on the cover. Yeah. He's an in intergalactic space traveler from the planet Gassion. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everything, the everything on the planet is spaceship is all is all powered by vegetation, vegetables, flowers, anything. So you know, produces the gas which powers everything on the spaceship and their planet. Yeah, he, but he's uh, he's he's run out run out of fuel, short of where they normally refuel in the Amazon. Right, uh, and they've landed in a remote farmer's field. Uh, which has scared the living daylights out the farmer who's who's rung the local police a child of the police uh, police sergeant has come down wondering what the hell to do with him so they've uh, they've, they've sort of gathered him together and they've, they've hidden him in the back of the police station yard so they don't get the world's press there while while they're um, they're reconfiguring the, the, the spaceship engine to run on cabbages. Right. As, a, as opposed to the bumbumba fruit they get from <laughs> the, from the Warawis, who are a, a, um, a remote Amazon jungle tribe. Right. Are they a tribe of pygmies by any chance? Well, they're, 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 they're four foot high pygmies that live in a five foot high jungle. Right. He said, he said, he's only ever, he's talking to Charlie, the player. He said, well, I've only ever met two of them. He said, but you can hear them out in the jungle and you can hear them just keep saying, where are we? <laughs> there, there's lots of silly references like that to it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, and, that, that one's coming up soon. That, yeah, that, that, that's coming along nicely, yeah. And I'm also working on grumps at the minute. So, uh, which is which is probably of the ones I've done of the three, it is the trickiest one because it has so many characters. Uh, oh. I wonder if I've got. Let me just open my notes on it, and I'll tell you <laughs> on this one, because Grumps will be Grumps will be the next one out, won't it? When we finish it, Trevor's out now. Trevor the tractor is out now, but Grumps is a work in progress. And if I look at my file, because whenever I do a character, I save the voice in a folder so that when the character comes back up, I can listen again and in case I've forgotten what I did for them. And currently in my voices folder, which I'm opening now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. There are 30 characters <laughs> so far. Now, some of them, they're doubled up here because I'll have like... Uh, no, you know what? They're... No, there aren't. There's 30 characters. Sometimes <laughs> when I do a book, I'll have like, if it's like Mr. Higgins, I'll have Mr. Higgins, but then I'll also put it in as Higgins in case later on it comes up without the prefix so I can I can look it up easier. But I'm just looking and I haven't done that with any of them in this book. <laughs> there, is actually, there is actually 30 different... Oh, no, I've got Arthur Pickering and Grumps as two separate ones and they're the same. So it's 29. It's 29. But that's that's a lot, you know. That's a lot of characters. Uh, for for a book that's only about, I think it's about an hour and five minutes long. Maybe. Like that, yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Um, but um, do you want do you want to talk about what Grumps is? I know we will, when the Grumps comes out, we'll do a special thing on Grumps. But do you want to talk about now and and yeah. why he needs so many characters? Because he does need that many. He does yeah. need that many to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was actually, it was actually my dad that gave 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 me the inspiration for him. Although, you know, he's a totally different character to my dad, but he, he, he could have his moments and have a good moment. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Arthur Arthur Pickering is a, is an ex army, um, ex army man, a a a, 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 a no nonsense ex army sergeant got his strong beliefs and uh, he, he's now a, uh, a full-time lollipop man this is set in the 1970s um, loves kids hates motorists and he doesn't particularly like anybody really but uh, dedica dedicated to his job uh, but terrorizes terrorizes the motorists in the town um, but he uh, as part of his principles, he uh, he keeps a little black book, and uh, any, anybody that crosses his path or does something that he thinks is not right, they go in his li they go in his little black book for retribution of, of some description in the future, um, and it, and it's just really uh, a day in the life of Arthur Pickering, and it takes you it takes you from his from his his morning. Um, his morning crossing patrol through the day to, to, the, to the evening um, where he meets up with his, with his two best pals. Um, uh, and it, it, oh, don't, don't want to give too much away, but he's, no. he, he's, he's got a wicked sense of humour. Yes. Uh, and he likes to win at all costs. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> But he has a he has an ongoing battle. Um, he has an ongoing battle with the next door neighbour. Yeah. Uh, Arthur's Arthur's pride and joy. His um, greenhouse is constantly crapped on by the next door neighbour's passion for his pigeons. So that that's a uh, that's a, a that's a dispute that escalates quite dramatically. Yes. Um, and the the. the it, it's, I, I it's, think I think each situation, and there are many in his single day, <laughs> they all escalate quite dramatically <laughs> in one way or another. <laughs> and some of them, he even starts it. Like, I, I'm not going to give too much away, but the incident with the snuff. Oh, um, yeah. The fellow that was the victim in that particular <laughs> tale was an innocent bystander. In all, the, there are, you know, other people in the story... They they do wind him up for some reason. There is something that sets him off. Yeah. Um, it might be somebody beeping the horn of a taxi. It might be, you know, but there are a couple of innocent bystanders, <laughs> collateral damage in the whole in the whole story of Grumps, which make which makes it even more predictable. It's not like Grumps is offended or his, his nose is out of joint because this happened and he tries to get even. Sometimes he just goes out of his way to have a win. <laughs> <laughs> and so you don't, it's not, you don't know where the next things go. But, 
you know, he at the end of the day, he's extremely con- content and pleased with himself. <laughs> he's not he's not worried or second guessing himself or <laughs> His conscience is clear and he's about to sleep soundly at the end of the day when he sums it all up nicely at the end. It's a great book. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot, yeah, it was a lot, of, a lot of fun, a lot of fun writing that. I'll bet, yeah. And that one, you know, the, 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 the other two, Santa's Disastrous Delivery and this one, Trevor the Tractor, I would say they are, without doubt, great kids' books. But Grumps, you know, I, I don't know whether that's a grown-up's book. I mean, I'm sure kids will love it. But I think if a grown-up is reading it to a kid, the grown-up will get every bit out of it just as much as the kid will. Because I think there's a lot of themes in there which are, you know, themes about frustrations about, you know, modern life uh, yeah. that, that, that it taps into. Yeah, but yeah, it's great. Really, really good. I, I did write it because uh, going going back to writing the story, uh, uh, reading the stories for for Claire and the kids when they were little. I thought it, it needs to be a, it needs to be a you know an entertaining book for the kids. But I think it's it's important for for the person reading it to get something out of it because I think if you yeah. enjoy reading it, it comes across comes across to the kids a lot better. Well, that was your original motivation, wasn't it? When you were saying like, oh, not this book again, you know, because you, you were way past enjoying it. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, a, that's a good thing with them. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Grumps was written with a, with, a, with a far elder readership in mind. It was. That was deliberate. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, but the, yeah. The, 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 there's probably a few little things in there that any... Only people of our age would, would pick up on. Yeah. Okay. Well, Glyn Davies, the one that is out now, as well as Santa's disastrous delivery, is Trevor the Tractor. Check it out. Check out the links uh, in the description. To, uh, directly, It'll direct you straight to Amazon. You can get the book and the audio book there. It's a pleasure working with you, Glyn. It's, uh, it's another lovely book. Good fun as well. Good for adults. Um, not that I class myself as a fully fledged adult, but still, um, I had a lot of fun with it. I, I really enjoyed it. It's great. It's Trevor the Tractor. <laughs>